Welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. I'm available for code reviews, contracting, and on-site training. Now, in this episode, I'm going to discuss very briefly GNU function attributes. Now, I want to be clear that, for the most part, I try very hard to avoid using compiler-specific extensions and attributes in my code because they're not portable and I have to 99% of the time be very much concerned about the portability of my C++ code where I'm supporting many architectures at once with many different compilers and this is something that I advocate that everyone do if you can because it gives you much more robust code and you have a stronger guarantee that you're actually using well-defined C++ when it compiles incorrectly and passes all of your tests on multiple compilers. So that said, I just wanted to bring up these GNU function attributes. Now, this is a rather large set of things. This is available easily on the GCC website. And we've got common attributes, and then we've got attributes for basically every single CPU architecture that GCC supports. I'm going to go into the common function attributes. And the one that I am most likely to see in code that I'm looking at is this always in line. And it says generally functions are not in line unless optimization is specified. For functions declared in line, this attribute inlines the function independent of any restrictions that otherwise apply to inlining. So basically, you're kind of forcing the compiler to inline a function. And again, if you saw my most recent episode on function inlining, I strongly recommend that you trust the compiler. But I wanted to bring this up to give a quick example about these function attributes. So if you've watched C++ Weekly at all, you should not be surprised that this code has gotten inlined into main. This add function got inlined into main, plus some optimizations taking into account this plus 2 for the argc here. So we're basically adding argc plus argc plus 2. And it's doing something like this here. So let's go ahead and pull back our optimizations. If we go back to 01, then we can see that main is actually calling the add function here. Now, the always inline attribute is going to look something like this. So even though we have optimizations down at 01, we are telling the compiler, yes, I very much want you to always inline this, and the compiler is going to dutifully do that and it inlines it, and it's no longer an actual function call to add. So for review, take this out, and we can see that it is actually branching to the function add, put it back in, and we can see that it is inlining the add right here. Now this is non-standard syntax that is you know, kind of compiler specific. If we really needed to do this, we might have to do something like might have to do something like this to put that attribute before here if we're doing like cross-platform code or something. But there is a solution that does not have to rely on compiler-specific behavior. And that is why I am bringing this up in this episode, because I'm always about portability. So we're back to this version. We're calling this branch to this add here. But we want to use syntax that is standard in C++. And it turns out that we can. If we use the C11.14 attribute syntax here with these double brackets, we can specify we want something from the GNU namespace and we want always in line here. And it does exactly what we wanted it to do. Now, depending on your compiler version, you might get some error or warning saying, I don't know that attribute, so you know I'm going to fail to compile. But in C++17, the compiler is required to accept attributes that it doesn't know. So if you really wanted to, which by the way, this attribute is accepted by Clang or GCC, so it's got, yeah, Clang and GCC going on here. This has been actually the Clang one this entire time. You could hypothetically do something like 
And the compiler is required to ignore the one that it doesn't know, and we get a warning here saying unknown attribute always in line. So you might have to do a little bit of conditional code or something, but in my opinion, the syntax is much cleaner, and it's portable, and probably something to consider if you need to do this in the future. So again, I do not recommend using the always inline attribute. I do recommend relying on your compiler to do the right thing, but if you have a reason to use some of these compiler-specific attributes, I do strongly recommend that you use the new syntax that C++14 and 17 affords us and get something that is a little bit more portable. So, as always, thanks for watching.